Okay, guys, Professor Hildebrandt here. I'm going to pick up where I left off. Um, the first third of the chapter on demand has already been covered. So now we're going to go through uh, the, the second third on supply. So this is the firm side of the market. So now we have to think like we are a company, okay? So we're going back to our original example with pizza. And so this is called a supply schedule. So it's showing us at all these different prices of pizza, here's the quantity that our firms are willing and able to supply. And so what we would do to get from the supply schedule to our supply curve is just take each combination and we're gonna plot these out on a graph. So we go 15 and 28, 12 and 24, 9 and 20, 6 and 16, 3 and 12. We connect all of our dots and we have our upward sloping supply curve. Now notice this time, unlike demand, if we were to calculate the slope of our line, it would have a positive value. Again, we say it's upward sloping. So this means my variables of price and quantity move in the same direction. So look again at my schedule. As we move down and price decreases, you'll notice that this time quantity supplied also decreases, okay? So there is a direct, or sometimes you'll hear it called a positive relationship between price and quantity supplied. So again, um, just some terms that we need to know the difference. Um, our quantity supplied is how much our firms are willing to sell at one price. So what are we gonna sell at $10? How many pizzas will we sell at $10? That is quantity supplied, okay? The supply schedule then shows the whole relationship. So it's that table that says at all of these different prices, here are the quantities that would be supplied. We then take the supply schedule, as I showed on the previous slide, we graph it to get our supply curve showing that whole relationship. Um, and just like with demand, if price changes, so if the price of my good, in this case pizza, so if the price of my good changes, then we have what is called a change in quantity supplied, and we show this by moving along the existing supply curve. This is different from the overall relationship, which we call supply, um, and it's represented by the curve. Quantity supplied then is one point on the curve. Again, how many pizzas do I sell at one price? Okay. Um, if we move along the supply curve, we call it a change in quantity supplied. It's always due to a change in price. We do have an economic law as well called the law of supply. And this is just describing that direct or positive relationship between price and quantity supplied. So again, higher price, higher QS, um, there's a higher reward and potential profit margin. And so um, we see more firms wanting to enter the market because they can cover marginal costs. That's more of a micro concept, so I'll leave it at that. Just like with demand, how do we get from individual supply to a market supply? We simply sum up um, all of the quantities supplied by all of the firms. So, you know, if we have... Um, if price is, uh, you know, $5 or 10 or 20, and we have firm A, B, and C, and maybe at a price of $5, they'll sell one, one, and two, and at a price of 10, they would sell five, five, and uh, five, maybe, keep my numbers easy, and then at a price of 20, 10, 12 and 12, well, then the quantity supplied for the market, again, is going to be summing up individual quantities at each price. So at a price of $5, one plus one and two is four. For $10, it would be 15. And for a price of $20, it would be 34 um, pizzas or whatever we're selling, okay? So that's how we go from individual supply to market supply. Just like with demand though, there are things that will shift the supply curve or we say things 
that will change supply, okay? So what are those things? We again have five factors. New technology, um, this is a very, very big reason. Um, the cost of inputs. So inputs are resources that we need to make our product. Uh, returns from alternative activities, I'll talk about in a moment. Sellers' expectations of the future, and then the number of firms in the market. So state of technology, or our we call it our know-how. Um, if we have a new technology, if we have an improvement to the production process, this is going to help us produce more, okay? So what we see when we have new technology or a new production process is that production costs are going to decrease. And so anything that makes production costs decrease will make supply increase or shift to the right away from the origin, as shown here in my graph by going from supply curve S to supply curve S prime. So you can see previously at a price of $12 a pizza, we were only willing and able to supply 24 million a week, um, but we have some new technology that makes it cheaper to produce pizzas. So we move from point G to point H on the new supply curve, and now we're willing and able to supply 28 million pizzas a week. Um, okay, again, the cost of inputs or the resources that we need. So your relevant resources, what do you need to make a pizza, right? You need a store, you need a pizza oven, you need flour, you need cheese, you need tomatoes, yada, yada, yada. All of those things are relevant resources. Um, if we see an increase in the price of those resources that we need, then we will see a decrease in supply, so the opposite. So again, I can kind of sum this up. Anything that causes production cost to decrease, whether that's new technology or our resource prices get cheaper, will always cause supply to go up. And anything that causes, like this one's talking about production cost to increase, our supply will go down. And so we're showing that here, shifting from S1 to S3. And again, like I showed you with um, the example with demand, column one here is our price. Column two is the original quantity supplied. And then column three is quantity supplied after the change. And in this case, the change was an increase in our relevant resources. And so you can see here, we are decreasing our quantity supplied by 10 million pounds of coffee a month um, at each price. And so we shift over to the left to this new S3 supply curve. So at each and every price, at $8, we are producing less. At $7, we are now producing less, okay? At every price. Okay, this is probably the hardest one here for supply, um, but returns from alternative activities. Um, some textbooks will call it uh, prices of other goods, okay? But basically, your resources can be used more than one way. If you have 100 acres, right? Well, you can't grow all crops on that 100 acres. It'll depend on your climate, your soil, etc. cetera. But um, usually these two grow, these two crops can grow in similar situations. So corn or soybeans. So here's my resource, 100 acres of land. There's two different goods I can produce. I can grow corn or soybeans. So what does that mean? Well, because they have alternative uses, my resources, if I grow corn on those 100 acres, I don't have that land to grow soybeans. So what we see happening is if the relative price of one of those alternative goods increases, it will decrease supply, <coughs> sorry y'all, for the other. So, um, you know, I'm just gonna give arbitrary numbers here, but right now, if the market price of corn was $10 a bushel or something, and the price of soybeans was also $10 a bushel, then I'm fairly indifferent in terms of market price as to which crop I'm going to use my resource to grow. However, an increase in the price. So let's say now the new price of soybeans 
at the market is now $15 a bushel, making those more profitable than my corn. So what happens is I use my resource to grow soybeans. Therefore, it decreases the supply of corn. Now we could also see the opposite occur if the price of my alternative good were to decrease. So instead of 10, if it was maybe seven, then this would increase the supply of corn because corn is now more profitable. So that's how you think through these um, impacts to a market. The fourth factor are changes in sellers' expectations. So if we expect prices to go up in the future, um, then we're going to um, maybe increase um, the supply, I think this is written wrong. Y'all give me one second. Decrease the current supply of easily. Yeah. So we're going to want to save those things. So right here, if, if I can easily store my good and I think that I can get higher profits down the road, let's say I've got wine or something, I, I don't want to supply it right now while the price is lower. I want to wait for that price increase to happen, okay? We actually saw this um, when the price of crude oil got so low. You had countries like Saudi Arabia. They were still pumping their oil, but they were putting it on these flatbed ships just sitting out in the bay because they didn't want to bring their oil to market yet because price, world price, had gotten so very low, okay? All right, and then the last one, this is really intuitive, is simply a change in the number of firms. So because market supply is the summation of all firms, if the number of producers increase, then supply increases. We could see the opposite though. If the number of firms in the market decreases, guess what? We would see a decrease in the supply of that good. Okay, so just a couple of little questions that I want y'all to think through. Um, this will review both the part A and part B, um, so demand and supply. So if you haven't watched the demand video or if you didn't join me in a session, then you know go do that. So which of the following would increase the demand for ice cream? So when you're breaking down these questions, first, what side of the market are we looking at? Well, we're going to think like a consumer. We're thinking about demand, okay? And we're looking for something specifically that would increase the demand for our good and our good in this case is ice cream. So I'm gonna look through my options. Let me give you some hints on how to do this. See if you can find anything that seems like it's talking about supply. That's not gonna be the right answer because the question is asking about a change in demand. So I read A, a decrease in the price of the butter used to make, oh, there's your key phrase, used to make ice cream. That screams production. Production means an impact on supply. Our question is asking about demand. So A is out. Okay. And then I notice, oh my goodness, I see that phrase again. Look at C. Used to make. Again, this is dealing with supply. We're not interested. C is not the right answer. Okay. Let's look at B. A decrease in the price of ice cream. Now, what's my good? My good is ice cream. Price of ice cream goes down. Hmm, what do I know about that? A decrease in the price of ice cream. That's my good. The law of demand tells me there's an inverse relationship, but it's a relationship between the price of my ice cream and the quantity demanded. So in this case, a decrease in the price of ice cream would cause an increase in quantity demanded. But that is not the same thing as an increase in demand. An increase in demand is talking about my demand curve shifting to the right. Okay, that's a different thing. So B is not the right answer, but that's probably the most missed answer. That's what students would go for that's wrong. But look at D, an increase in the price of frozen yogurt. Now, yes, we're saying price again, but this is not price of ice cream. It's frozen yogurt. So now you go, hmm, 
Well, what does frozen yogurt have to do with ice cream? Well, they're both cold, sweet, and my girls love to eat them, especially in the summer. That makes them substitute goods. They are substitutes in consumption. They can be used in place of. So, an increase in the price of frozen yogurt. Well, again, the law of demand tells me that if the price of frozen yogurt goes up, the quantity demanded of frozen yogurt is going to go down, making now ice cream the relatively cheaper option. And so we see demand for ice cream increase. So D here is the correct answer to this question. Well, now let's look at one for supply, and this will close us out, um, and then you can go watch the video on markets, bringing the two together. So which of the following would decrease the, okay, supply this time, and we're still going to be looking at ice cream, but this time we're saying it's chocolate ice cream. And now we're looking for something that decreases. So how am I going to start? Once again, I'm going to rule out anything that would be talking about demand. A, a medical report finding that consuming... Keyword there, you don't even have to read the rest, but okay, chocolate prevents cancer. Wow, great, but that impacts demand because it's talking about consumers. So A is not the right answer. Um, okay, B, a decrease in the price of chocolate ice cream. What's my good? Chocolate ice cream. Does a change in the price of my good ever change supply? Or demand? No, it does not. A decrease in the price of chocolate ice cream would simply mean that quantity supplied would decrease, but quantity supplied is not the same thing as saying a decrease in supply, which is what my question is asking. So B is not correct. Okay, C and D, an increase in the price of chocolate. Okay, how does chocolate relate to chocolate ice cream? Oh, wow, I think that's probably an input resource, right? I need chocolate to make chocolate ice cream. Okay, that might be going somewhere. Let's just glance at D quickly. An increase in the price of whipped cream ice cream topping. Do I need Cool Whip to make ice cream? No, so it's not a resource. Hmm, are the goods related? Yes, they are. They're actually complements, but they're complements in consumption. So again, D is talking about demand. So let's make sure that C is our right answer. An increase in the price of chocolate. Well, I need chocolate to make chocolate ice cream. And I told y'all before, anything that increases production cost will mean we have a decrease in supply. C is the correct answer. All right, guys, that's all I have for the, the second part of chapter four. Again, I will, um, I will have one more video for y'all to watch uh, rounding out this chapter.